is called When the Sun of My Life Goes Down. Oh Lord, I know I'm living on higher ground. I know because in my heart's true love I found. And when I hear Gable's trumpet loudly sound, I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. When my labor here is over at last and I lay these burdens down, I'll sail away home to heaven above for my Savior I have found. I'll lay these burdens down at His feet and exchange Him for a crown. I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. Oh Lord, I know I'm living on higher ground. I know because in my heart's true love I found. And when I hear Gable's trumpet loudly sound, I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. To the changing world I'll bid farewell when I hear that trumpet sound. I'll sail away home to heaven above for my Savior I have found. I've made my plans, I'm ready to go. I'll wear a robe and crown and meet my friends and loved ones up yonder when the sun of my life goes down. Oh Lord, I know I'm living on higher ground. I know because in my heart's true love I found. And when I hear Gable's trumpet loudly sound, I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. Oh Lord, I know I'm living on higher ground. I know because in my heart's true love I found. And when I hear Gable's trumpet loudly sound, I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. I'll leave this world of trouble and sorrow when the sun of my life goes down. Be, that'd be very good. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that so much. All right. Last Sunday night, everybody's wondering where I was. And I was over my office, and I was just deep into uh, Acts chapter 20 again. And this is where I was. If you'd join me again with Acts chapter 20, we're we'll looking at verse 22, Acts 22. And uh, I was so deep into it, <laughs> time got away from me. And I think, brother... Uh, Rick uh, Lewis for carrying on without me. Of course, he carries on all the time, so has no problem. But uh, anyway, but this morning I'd like to sh uh, share with you uh, in this verse, knowing and not knowing. A while ago, I know not, and then, but I do. But I know this. I know not. Each, each verse started off with I know not, and uh, and then of course, but I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And uh, so then the next verse is, I know not, and something else. And so there's some things that we're, we're looking at here this morning, um, knowing and not knowing. Acts chapter 20 and verse 22. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. And I don't know why that grabbed me, but it just grabbed me. And uh, another verse grabbed me too, and, and working on, but... but uh, uh, it, it just the, the idea is not knowing, you know, uh, look at it again. And, and now behold, I go, okay, not knowing. It didn't matter whether they knew what was going on or not, but he's still yet going to go. He said, now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me, okay? But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And so we were looking at this morning, first of all, I'd like to, to, to take a look at not knowing. The words there, not knowing, not knowing. Um, it, not knowing what was going to befall him there. 
that did not interfere with the certainties of the future in his life. It didn't interfere at all with that. Um, uh, you know, not knowing, uh, but going. Not knowing, but going. Now, folks, there's a lot of things that we don't know. Amen? We just hang a lot of those things just a while ago. A lot of things we don't know in our, in our life. A lot of uncertainties. You young folks, you know, you still have your whole future ahead of you, Lord willing. And you're not knowing. You, you, you don't know. Um, you know, when it comes time this year, uh, uh, when it comes time each year for graduation and we talk to uh, seniors and those who graduated from college also, those in college kind of know more, but there's still yet some even graduate from college still yet don't know. But we talk to a graduating senior and uh, one of the things you always ask is, well, what are you going to do? You know, are you going to are you going to go to college? Are you going to go career uh, school? Are you going to get a job? Are you going military? You know, what are you going to do? And don't know yet. Just still do it. And that, of course, they get tired of that after a while. Uh, you know, people start out there at about three months before graduation, start asking those questions, and by the time they get kind of tired of it. But you know, none of us know. None of, none of us know. But there's some things we do know. But none of us know for sure, for certain, uh, what's going to befall us, what's going to befall us. But still yet, he, he, was, he was not knowing, but going. He, well, he had received a ministry of the Lord. We talked about that earlier, but verse 24 says, but none of these things move me. Uh, of course, what he's talking about here is the Holy Spirit said that, you know, this, this affliction is going to be abiding with you. It's, I, I knew that already. You know, I knew that. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear to myself. Why? So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. And that is to what? To testify the gospel of the grace of of God. He had received a ministry from the Lord. The only thing then that, that concerned him was fulfilling that ministry. <clears throat> what lay ahead, <clears throat> really, excuse me, excuse me, let me clear my throat. <clears> throat. What lay ahead mattered nothing to him. All, all that mattered to him was fulfilling the ministry of which the Lord had, get him, had given him. We, things in our life that we do not know. But as a Christian, all that should matter to us is the calling that Jesus Christ has given us. And that is the same as Paul's of this, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That was not just given to Paul and the other apostles. That was given to every believer by the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shouldn't matter at all what lies ahead of us. It shouldn't matter. We don't know everything's lied before us, but I know one thing that I want to finish with joy the the ministry which God has given me. And I pray that you do you have the same thing in your own heart. And uh, you know, you say, Well, I haven't really started that ministry. Well, this is a good time to start right now. The good time to start by the example of Paul here given to us. But uh, but what lay ahead meant nothing to him. A carelessness. He had a carelessness to the minor, de minor details and a carefulness as to the principal matter. He had a carelessness as to minor matters and a carefulness um, on, the uh, on the principal matter. On the principal matter. Uh, folks, when it said, I know nothing, that isn't, that's not talking about that he's ignorant of something. That he just didn't, just doesn't know. In, in this case here, when you study it out, it's really, which we need to do always, but it means more than just not knowing about something, just being ignorant about the facts, being ignorant of what's coming to befall. It means more than that because of what Paul had said in the next verses. It's more than just ignorance. The words not knowing there literally mean not caring to know, not asking to know, in fact, preferring not to know, not caring to know, not asking to know, in fact, preferring not to know. 
that's a great attitude for all of us. Paul could have been caught up in worry and fretfulness as we do. But he didn't. And he set the example here. We could go right back and add this message to the example of Paul's ministries that we just have gone through. But a lot of times the unknown puts us into fretfulness, puts us into a worry, puts us into a concern, and changes our focus on the unknown rather than having our focus on that which is known. Paul said this, knowing, not, uh, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, is this, it, why? Look what he said first. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me. And, and now it can make an application of the verse here, okay? And now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not caring to know, not asking to know, in fact, preferring not to know what shall befall me there. You see how that makes it even more in-depth understanding there. Paul, Paul says, I don't, I don't care to know. I, you know I'm not going to ask, Lord, well, Lord, what's going to happen? Why? Because it's going to change my focus. And the things which we don't know, if we allow to, will change our focus. Is a carelessness as to minor matters and a carefulness to the principal matter. In other words, well, why? Why did he not even care to know? Why did he not even ask to know? Why did he not, in fact, even prefer uh, to, uh, to uh, he, he preferred not to know? Why? I ask that question. When I read the scriptures, I always ask who, what, where, why, when, how. It just, it just helps you meditate on the scriptures. Why? Well, so that he can finish his course with joy. If you're going to finish your course that God's given you, that course must be done by faith. Amen? And so if, if he had let those concerns, uh, the things which he did not know, interfere with his focus there, he would have been tried, tempted to walk in sight rather than in faith. And so, to finish his joy, but none of these things move me, neither count a life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus, to be able to walk by faith, not by sight. That's why. Paul left us a wonderful ministry, an example of ministry, and that is to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. I, I don't want to know I, 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 I'm not even asking to know, and I prefer not to know. Why? Because that would interfere with me walking by faith. Amen? By walking by faith. That's the attitude that all of us, every Christian needs to have, that are walking on, in, 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 on an appointed path of which the Lord has laid before each one of our, our lives in the service of the Lord. We can, so, we can walk in the unknown because of the, ba on, and we, we can walk into the unknown on the basis of that which is known. How did Paul, he said, why did he not even care about it? Because he already knew some things. And he knew, because of what he knew, was able to bring him and walk into what he did not know. In fact, I, I don't care to know. I'm not even going to ask to know, and I prefer not to know. Why? Because I already know enough. I already know enough. And so let's take a good look at that, okay? Look at the word, uh, we're going to look at knowing now. We're going to look at not knowing. But let's look at some things that he knew and some of the things of which we know uh, this morning so that we can have the same attitude of that I, I really don't care to know, uh, I'm not going to ask to know, and I really prefer not to know. Why? Because I already know some things. Amen? And that's going to carry me into the unknown and, by the way, through the unknown. Knowing. Well, what do we know? What did he know? Well, we know whose we are. Amen? I know whose I, who's, who's I am. 
Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Well, I know something, and I know Paul knew it, and he's taught us now that I have been bought with a price, and I'm not my own. Amen. Whatever he wants to do with me, amen, and I'm supposed to present my body a living sacrifice to him, wholly acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service. And so I, to pre present myself unto him and, and daily dying to self. Why? Because I know some things. I can do those things because I know whose I am. I know whose I am. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth, listen, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall be, see, see, see him as is. You know, the things that we, we, we don't know, but because we do know, we know we're going to be like him. We don't know what he thinks will be, how it's, going, how it's going to appear right now, but I do know this, that when he does come, I'm going to be like him. So it doesn't matter about the middle, amen? It doesn't matter about those things that come through. If God is going to work all things together for my good to begin with. He's going to, I've been predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the things that I don't know. What really matters is the things I do know. And I do know some things, and you do too. We know whom we serve. Not only whose we are, but also we know whom we serve. Whom we serve. In Colossians, Paul says in chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, And whatsoever ye do, do it hardly as to the Lord and not unto the men, knowing, so whatever I do, I can do heartily because I know something. Okay? What it is that's coming up that I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to do it hardly, uh, uh, not unto, uh, unto the Lord, not as unto men. Why? Because I know some things. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I know I can serve others. I know that I can do for others. I know that I can do whatever it may take to be able to do that. Why? Because I know that I'm His and I know that I serve Him. I know that I receive the reward for it. I don't know what that reward is, but I know it. Amen? I know it. So therefore, I can do those things. I can go through those things. We know whose we are. We know whom we serve. But we also know the way of his will. We know the way of his will. Some things. Paul says again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. I know God's will for me. And his will for me is, that I, is my sanctification. Now the word sanctification literally means to be set aside for a specific purpose. Okay? Uh, it's like where we get our word sanctuary. Uh, here in the auditorium, sometimes it's called a sanctuary. It's set aside for specific purposes. Okay? Um, uh, uh, and that's for, for worship and for special meetings. It's the meeting hall, it's the auditorium, and it's set aside. Well, you go to Madera Canyon, and it is a sanctuary up there. And it's a bird sanctuary, plus another, uh, all the other animals that's there also. But especially for birds. And so you can go there, and you know that you're going to be able to see deer, and you're going to be able to see uh, fox, and you're going to be able to see turkeys, and you're going to be seeing bear, uh, you're going to be seeing all kinds of things. Why? Because it's a protected area. It's been set aside for a specific purpose is a sanctuary a sanctuary and God says that you as a Christian and I as a Christian have been set aside for a specific purpose Paul knew what his sanctification was he knew what his purpose was do you know what your purpose is it is the, the, the purpose is the same and that is that, that we are to testify the gospel of the grace of God that's God's will I know that 
Okay. Now, how that's go what else going to happen uh, for me to be able to do that? Uh, all the things that will come into my life that, that tomorrow, uh, the, where it will allow me to testify of the grace of God, I don't know. But I do know this, that when I have the opportunity, I'm going to be able to, I've been set aside for the purpose of testifying of the grace of the Lord, and I'm going to be able to do that. I'm looking for that. Why? Because my, it's, his, it's his will. It's his will. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in verse 18, Scripture says, Paul says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything. It doesn't say always for everything, but it says in everything. In other words, what, what's going to happen in this circumstances? In, the, in, the, in everything. I can give thanks. In everything, I can give thanks. What is it the Lord's doing in my life? What, is he, what are the circumstances which is bringing my life to create more Christ-like character qualities than I've ever had before? Where is, 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 is molding me more and shaping me more into the image of Jesus Christ? I can give thanks, but yeah, that's in, in, in everything. In everything, give thanks. How can I do that? How can I do that? Because I know that's the will of God. In Christ Jesus. This is the will of God. And that will of God, knowing God's will, is going to be able to bring. If you don't know God's will, you're going to struggle with all these. Amen? If you don't know God's will, you must know God's will. And, and that's going to take you through the circumstances of life into, uh, into the, the, uh, uh, the things that will befall you in life. Paul also says in Philippians chapter um, what is it? I, 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 uh, verse 13 says, uh, I've got an E there, so bless your heart. She, she looked it up for me. Uh, to, Philippians 2.13 says, but it's, for God, but it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God, his good pleasure is the same thing, doing God's will. Realizing this, that God's working in us what kind of work is he doing? Well, he's getting us to the point where he, we're going to start wanting his will. We start desiring. He starts giving us the desire and the power of doing his will. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will, your will, your desire, and to do, it gives you the power to do it, of his, of his pleasure. God wants us to do his will. God wants us to do his pleasure. We know that. Those are some things we know. How he's going to work that in each one of our lives is going to be different. Every, every one of us. How is he going to do it? We don't know. But I do know this. I'm going to let him have his way with my life because of what I know about him. And Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. <clears throat> the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Remember I said, well, I'll go any gospel message that is lacking repentance uh, uh, is uh, not a complete gospel message. We preached about that. And uh, you, you realize that it didn't say, uh, not willing that any should perish, but that all should go to heaven. You know, you know you, repentance comes before heaven, folks. Amen. Repentance comes before heaven, all through the scriptures. Christ came preaching repentance. John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Christ came preaching repentance. Apostles came preaching repentance. And you'll find it all the way through of repentance, repentance. It was asked, what shall I do to, shall, shall we do to, to, to be saved? It should repent and be baptized for the mission of sins. What's first? Repentance and turning from sin and turning to God and turning from your ways and to, to God's ways. So God, we do know this. It's not God's will that any should perish at all. Not willing that the word any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If that's the will of God, 
You cannot tell me or convince me as a minister of the gospel that God's willing and his will is that some will perish. He would have to go against his own word. When you have that doctrine, it's called Reformed, uh, Reformed Baptists have fallen into it now, but that God is called Calvinism, that God has chosen some people to go to heaven and some people to go to hell, then this verse is not true. Amen? But it is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. To take that and twist it around, I don't even know why. But I think it's our enemy, uh, for one thing, to try to keep us from soul winning, for one thing. But anyway, we do know what God's will is. We know it's not his will that any should perish. And we do know that it is his will that all should come to repentance. Everyone. So we know whose we are. We know whom we serve. We know the way of his will. And we also know to watch in these last days. Back with me to Acts chapter 20, our text chapter. In Acts chapter 20, verse 19. And we're going to read all the way down to verse 32. The scripture says, Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable to you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. There's the proper gospel. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save say that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city that he'd been in, uh, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. Why? So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. God forbid that ever happened here. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all men, all them which are, what? Sanctified, which are sanctified. So we know whose we are. We know whom we serve. We know the way of his will. And we also know that we better be on the watch. We know to watch in these last days. He reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Folks, this is not just to the New Testament age church, the writing of the New Testament age. It's for us also today to be on the alert that things will start being diluted. Things will start being anemic. Things will be where God is not feared or revered, revered or uh, respected as once before. That even in our own hearts, things can become cold. Our hearts can become cold. The love of many shall wax cold. 
And Christ himself says, when I come again, will I find faith on the earth? Folks, the ministry is sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's also maintaining and be watchful. And then in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7 says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 7 and 8, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Not anybody or anything that he can. It's seeking whom he may. All right? The devil has no power in your life except that for which you give him. Just what, only that which you give him. That's why we give, neither give place to the devil. If you don't give him place, he has no jurisdiction at all. So be careful in these last days because we know that our enemy is about trying to seek uh, uh, whomever he, he may devour. Seeking whomever he may devour. In other words, whoever gives him space, whoever gives him place, whoever gives him juris jurisdiction, as I've quoted many, many times in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, know, know ye not, there's another thing to know, that whomsoever you yield yourself service to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether it's sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. And so we're supposed to yield our members as members of in instruments of righteousness uh, unto God. Because we know something. Because we know these saints. And we've been told these saints. And so here's what we can do then. We can rest in not knowing. Most people say that not knowing brings fretfulness to me. Restlessness to me. No. By trusting by the things of which we know, we can rest in the unknown. Amen? You can go through the unknown because of the things that are known. And the same thing in interpreting Scripture. When you find a cloudy Scripture and it doesn't quite seem to make sense and you're, you're tempted to say, well, I, I, th I think it's going to mean this and, and I think it's going to mean that, and you take a guess at it. If you have a, a Scripture that's cloudy, you go to a Scripture that's very clear. Amen? And you find that, that you know, that you know, that you know, that it is clear. That it is clear. And then you can then go and interpret that, which is a little fuzzier. Okay? Why? Because you can go into the fuzzy knowing that which you've already been in the light about. And, 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 and John tells us that these things are written that you may know that you have salvation. And he goes on and said, and that knowing that, that, you, 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 that, that you keep on believing. In other, words, in other words, you know you have salvation, but it's also written for you to continue in obedience. Continue in believing, in believing. So we can rest in not knowing because of things we know. Amen? In, in first, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Why? For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. He said, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Why? Because of what I know. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. That's called the ignorance of perfect rest. The ignorance of a perfect rest. So let me ask you a question. We'll close. Talk about knowing. Does the Lord know you? Does the Lord know you? Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. And then will I profess of them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. It's important for the Lord to know you. It's also important to answer this question, do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? In John chapter 17 and verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. There it is. 
the things that we know, things we do not know. The things we do not know, we can go through because of what we do know. And I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. How about you? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Where are you? Where are you this morning? If you find yourself, say, I know for sure, beyond shadow of doubt, if I died today, I'd spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that, and I know that, I know that. But then your circumstances of everyday life doesn't reflect it as strongly. And you find yourself being derailed. You find yourself being detoured. You find yourself sometimes like a roller coaster up and down in your faith. And because your circumstances, the things of which you don't know, you know, the things which you don't know, our whole nation is, is turned upside down over something they don't know, something they can't handle, and they're trying desperately to try to, to, try to fix it. But I'm going to tell you the cure to COVID's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing beyond a shadow of doubt, if you die today, you're going to spend eternity with Him. You can go through these things. Whatever these things are, no matter what it is, I know that I'm a son of God. And I, 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 know, I, I don't know all the things that's going to come before then, but I do know this. When I see him, I should be like him. I know that I have eternal life. And because of that, I can go through the circumstances of life. And I'm not going to let those circumstances derail me. Why? None of, these, none, of these things, none of these things derail me because I received a ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. None of these things upset me. To preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and let the things fall where they fall. That's not que sera, sera. That's not, uh, that's not uh, just uh, giving in to negative. That's based upon faith knowing some things about the Lord Jesus. Facts, not feelings. And Father, I pray this morning that you find your children being strengthened in these words. And those without you that are listening this morning, possibly to our, our message, Lord, that you strengthen them, but most of all, draw them to you. Bring them to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in Christ Jesus' name, amen.